Hello everyone, this is Dr. Prashant and welcome back to my public health series. In this video, I will be briefly talking about the Indian public health standards. So these are the guidelines set by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare to improve healthcare services in public health facilities. The recent guidelines were given in 2022 and there are four volumes depending on the facility for which they are applicable. For example, volume 1 for sub-district hospital and district hospital, volume 2 for CHC, volume 3 for health and wellness center, PHC, and volume 4 for health and wellness center, sub-health center. So let's start with volume 1 that is sub-district hospital and district hospital. Under population norms, first board committee recommendation where we all know that one bed per thousand population to be increased incrementally and later in the national health policy 2017 which recommended two beds per thousand population. So based on this, there are two terms. One is essential norm and desirable norm. So essential norm, we need to have one bed per thousand population. Whereas under desirable norm, it is two beds per thousand population. So the number of hospital beds in each district depends on different factors. For example, population of the district, disease patterns, healthcare needs, and the private hospital contributions. So the essential beds should come from government hospitals at different levels that is primary, secondary and tertiary care. But when calculating the patient to bed ratio, we need to focus on facilities from PHCs to district hospitals that is both primary and secondary care excluding the tertiary care because medical colleges serve multiple districts instead of one. So this is the table uh, which where you can see population on the left side along with essential beds and the desirable beds. So starting from less than 2 lakhs population to more than 30 lakhs population. Please go through it. And now when you are trying to fill up beds in primary, secondary and tertiary, priority should be given first to filling up beds in primary and secondary level hospitals before adding more beds in medical colleges that is tertiary care. And in order to reach the desirable number of beds, the government can also consider beds from private hospitals, railways, ESI hospitals and other public health facilities. So as a thumb rule, only beds that are used for more than 24 hours are considered as inpatient hospital beds and other beds which come under short term beds like emergency rooms, dialysis units, daycare services, they are not counted as inpatient beds. But when you are planning the budget, we need to include the short term beds also. So now coming to service provision in district and sub district hospitals. First, we all know that there are three main pillars under the district hospitals. That is clinical care, which include treatment, rehab, all these things. Second is knowledge hub, where we can see training of healthcare workers like doctors and nurses. And next is public health programs. We all know that any program will focus on prevention and health promotion. And now coming to types of services. First is essential services like essential norms, which include basic healthcare that must be available. Second is desirable services where we can see advanced care that hospital should aim to provide over time. And now coming to planning and resource management, first important thing is to reduce the out of pocket expenditure. And second, smaller districts may share some services like ICUs, cardiology or oncology due to lack of specialists. And now the specialized services can be provided at bigger hospitals instead of every district hospitals. And now coming to support services. Hospitals must have cleaning, security, laundry services as per government standards. And under knowledge hub role, district hospitals should offer medical training which include nursing, a &M training, all these things. They can partner with universities for better education and resources also. And now coming to the last one that is referral system. Hospitals must have a well organized ambulance system with trained staff and also a 24-7 control center which can coordinate emergency transport. And now coming to next volume that is community health center. It is divided into two parts. One is community health center rural that is CHC rural and second is community health center urban that is UCHC. So the population norms for CHC rural include in hilly and tribal areas it's 80,000. Under plain areas it's 1,20,000. Whereas UCHC that is urban CHC the population in metro cities is 5 lakhs and above and in non-metro cities it's 2.5 lakhs. So a CHC should be established at the community development block, taluka or circle level. Whereas urban CHC should be established at the ward, town, block, city or district level. So to establish effective convergence and linkages with citizen centric services. So now coming to service provision. First we will look at the role of CHC. So it include provide specialist care close to the community, reduce out of pocket expenditure, for vulnerable groups and last is focus on treatment, prevention, rehab and health promotion. 
And now coming to types of CHCs, there are two types of CHCs. First is non-FRU CHC, that is non-first referral unit CHC. Second is first referral unit CHC. So the functions of non-FRU CHCs include handle maternal and child health, infectious diseases, anemia, mental health, NCDs, etc. Whereas FRU provide all non-FRU services like which I have mentioned now. Along with that, it also provides specialist care, surgeries and blood transfusion facilities. And now under expansion and public health role, CHCs will also serve as a public health surveillance hubs for tracking diseases. And it also strengthens laboratory diagnostics for both patient care and disease monitoring. And now coming to types of services, essential services include basic health care every CHC must provide. Whereas desirable services include advanced services that CHC should aim to provide over time. And now coming to the last one that is referral and follow up system. A well equipped ambulance network for patient referrals and also ensure follow up care at the community or PHC level. So now coming to next one that is volume 3 that is health and wellness center primary health care center. So that is HWC PHC. So coming to population norms there are three types of PHC facilities. Rural PHC, urban PHC and polyclinic. So the population for rural PHC under plain it is 30,000. Under hilly and tribal areas it's 20,000. And for urban PHC it's 50,000 and for polyclinic the population is 2.5 to 3 lakhs. So HWC PHC should be established co-terminus with panchayats to establish effective convergence and linkages with citizen centric services. So now coming to service provision first we will look at the role of HWCs. First deliver comprehensive people centered care beyond basic treatment. Second prevent and manage communicable and non-communicable diseases. Third is engage in community outreach, home visits and health promotion. Now coming to 12 key health services provided at HWCs starting from pregnancy and childbirth care to mental health services. So it's a package of 12 healthcare services. Please go through it. And now coming to referral and follow up system we can see PHCs must act as a bridge between primary and secondary healthcare and also maintain strong referral linkages with CHCs, district hospitals and tertiary care and also ensure follow up care at the community level and also equipped ambulances and trained staff for effective referral transport. So all these things come under referral and follow up system. And now coming to urban primary health centers that is UPHCs, they provide primary health care with outreach services. Whereas polyclinics that is multi-speciality UPHCs, they offer specialist OPD services for example medicine, pediatrics etc. And there are additional services also which include oral care, physiotherapy, optometry and diagnostics. And now coming to infrastructure and digital health integration. So which include teleconsultation and hub and spoke diagnostic models to expand the services. And also X-ray, UHC, CT scans may not be mandatory but should be linked to nearby facilities. So all these things come under infrastructure and digital health integration. And now coming to essential and desirable services. Essential services are the minimum must have healthcare services at each facility whereas desirable services are the advanced services that should be added over time. So that is based on community needs. And now coming to the last volume that is health and wellness center sub health center or HWC SHC. So under population norms there are two types of PHC facility. One is HWC SHC rural and second is urban HWC. For HWC rural, we can see under plain it's 5000 population, under hilly and tribal areas it's 3000. For urban HWC, the population in plain is 15,000 to 20,000. So now coming to the role of HWC, it focus on disease prevention, health promotion and early intervention. And it also act as a link between the community and higher healthcare facilities like PHCs, CHCs and district hospitals. And also provide holistic, people-centered and equitable healthcare through outreach and community participation. So now coming to the staffing pattern uh, which was recently asked in the UGC exam. So they have asked about essential staff nurses required for 24-7 PHC. So for both 24-7 PHC and 24-7 urban PHC the essential staff nurses required is 7. Okay. Please go through the other human resources also. And now coming to the key services provided at HWC uh, which is similar to the last one. So it is a package of 12 services right starting from pregnancy and childbirth care to mental health services. Please go through it. 
So now coming to additional services provided at health and wellness centers. So it include teleconsultation and expanded diagnostics, referral and transport system, integration of Ayush and yoga, and also school health and wellness ambassadors initiative. And under community outreach and public health role, HWCs will conduct outreach sessions based on health needs. So which include regular health checkups, special health camps, vaccination and awareness drives, disaster and outbreak management, and also targeted interventions. And under facility infrastructure and human resources, HWCs will provide essential services that is nothing but minimum assured healthcare at each facility and also desirable services which will be introduced over time based on community needs and human resources, infrastructure and services will be scaled accordingly in future. I hope it's helpful. Thank you.